big round of applause for the New York Yankees here. I'm one of the owners here at the Woodbridge Brewery. I want to thank everybody for coming out. I'm accompanied here with the mayor of Woodbridge. We want to thank all the Yankee fans that have supported us for the last two years since we bought this establishment. We continue getting bigger and better, and it's all because of your support. And we want to thank everybody from the bottom of our heart from Woodbridge Brewery. Without further ado, the mayor of Woodbridge. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome to Woodbridge, the best town around. And tonight, the reason we're one of the best towns around in the state of New Jersey is because of the place you're at and because of this man to my left, Mahir Thakar, who has taken over the Woodbridge Brewing Company from J.J. Biddings last July, two Julys ago. So for two years, he's owned this place. He's turned it into the sports capital, sports autograph capital of not only New Jersey, but probably the entire tri-state, multi-state area. Let's hear from Mahir. And tonight he's outdone himself. We have actually 20% of the Yankee lineup here right behind me here. 20% of the Yankee lineup. But Mahir has done such great things with this place. He's been, he's got, you know, Mariano Rivera. He's got uh, Tino Martinez. He's had Bernie Williams. He's had Rangers. He's had uh, Giants. He's had Jets, all kinds of, there's even another team from New York. I forget the name of it. He said some of them too. <laughs> And tonight, he's managed to bring Clark Schmidt, Oswaldo as well, as well Cabrera, Tommy Canely, Luke Weaver, and a very special mention to Jose Trevino, who was the very first athlete to come here and sign autographs. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce a young man. He's, he's, I got him by six years, so he is younger to me. He's a four-time best-selling author. He worked for the New York Times Sports Department for 22 years. You don't work there for 10 minutes unless you're really, really good at what you do. He's won an Emmy Award with the New York Yankees TV crew way back in 2011. The only good thing about yesterday's rainout was we got to listen to Jack Curry for an extra hour and a half. <laughs> And I find myself really listening to him. I think he's one of the most insightful, thoughtful, and well-researched analysts on TV today, and certainly uh, on the Yankee broadcast team. I find myself agreeing with everything he says, because that's how good he is. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce today, to moderate tonight's panel, the great Jack Curry. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I was not expecting that type of an introduction, but I appreciate it. You should have just dropped the mic after that. <laughs> that was fantastic. You've, all, you've also stolen my notes, because right on my notes, I was going to say, we've got five Yankees here tonight. That's almost 20% of the Yankee roster. I guarantee you, we don't know what Judge and Soto are doing tonight, but there is no way anywhere else in the New York tri-state area you have 20% of the Yankee roster. <laughs> That's something to be very excited about. You have to congratulate me here, as the Mr. Mayor said. You have to congratulate the great Frank Luna for organizing this and bringing all these guys together. I already like the energy. My goal is to make this as exciting an experience as yesterday's walk-off was. You think you guys can make that happen? That's, that's a lofty goal, but we'll, we'll see if we can make that happen. So here's the story, here's the format. I get to ask these guys questions, that's what I do for a living. I'm gonna throw them a little BP, or since we have some pictures here, it's gonna be a little bit of a bullpen session. But the questions that are gonna matter are gonna come from you. So get your questions ready. We want you to have the opportunity to talk to some Yankee fans. We're gonna start the questions based on service time, Tommy. And you've got the most service time, more than eight years coming into this season. So my first question for you is, in spring training, a lot of guys were talking about turning the page on last year, setting a foundation to just take off this year, and it really seemed as if that came to fruition. What can you tell me about laying the groundwork in spring training that got you guys to a tie for first place right now? Uh, yeah, so dating back to last year, I mean, obviously it didn't go the way we wanted it to. Uh, we had plenty of injuries, and it was just a struggle. I know a lot of guys, we... Uh, pretty disgruntled going into the off season, you know, and uh, I knew it was it was a, a big deal to come back into the season and really get things going in spring training. 
I would say it really started in the off season. A lot of us, you know, kept in touch, communicated, and I know a lot of us were were you know at home, hungry to come back. It was I told a lot of people this was the one year I came into the year where I was like truly excited, like pumped up, ready to go, and uh, I you know was ready to get back and I know a lot of guys were so and then coming into the season you know we spring training was great we brought in Soto everybody knew that was the big big get and um, it really took off I mean I always heard great things about him seeing him up front and then finally got to see him every day in person was kind of a true wow factor for me and uh, but uh, overall you know everybody's we just kept our noses down and dug deep and kept kept grinding it's all about the grind and uh I think we're doing a great job and you know having cap as our as our leader he uh, that guy does a wonderful job of keeping us in line and keeping us going i'm going to try and hit each one of these guys with one team question and one personal question and then you guys take over so the personal question you throw your change up almost 70 percent of the time trevi might call that <laughs> pitch five six times in a row what kind of confidence or where did you get the confidence to be able to throw that pitch as often as you do? Um, yeah, so <laughs> obviously I, I throw a change up a lot. I mean, that's a, that's, that's obvious. Um, I would say I definitely probably, it probably developed, I would say mostly in 19. And then uh, in 20, I, I uh, had the elbow injury. But when I came back from the elbow injury, that's when it truly took off. And I think it's just, it's a confidence level and a, it's a command. I think it's easily, obviously my best commanded pitch. So for some reason it keeps working. So we just keep throwing it. <laughs> so that, yeah, that's basically what it is. So I, uh, I put my trust in Trevi, he puts it down or, you know, calls it on his little pad thing he's got on his leg. But uh, <laughs> I, uh, I have full trust in him and full trust in the pitch. So hand the mic to the guy to your left because he's next. More than six years of service time. No, Luke is next. You, you. Luke has more than six years of service time coming into this year. Wow. <laughs> he throws a change up. He throws a cutter. He simplified his motion coming into this season. But, but my first question is, how much does New York feel like a home for you? Because you really seem to have found a home. You seem so comfortable here. You're going to set a record this year for most games, career high for you, and innings pitched for you. Explain to me how, how the Bronx feels like home. What up, people? <laughs> it's, uh, it's been a lot. It's been a lot um, on my plate, but it's been something that I'm hungry for. Uh, it's something that I had to adjust and transition to from starting, but, you know, it is what it is, and we keep rolling. But... You know, since we're in Jersey, we'll keep it light on the New York side. Uh, it's uh, being a Florida guy. It's wild being here. I mean, it's everybody kind of looks at the Yankees from afar, and it's like, all right, we know what the Yankees think of themselves. And uh, but it's different. It is different. It's it's a it's a big market. It's intense fans. Uh, it's it's great. I mean, you play up, you elevate. We see guys come over here play amazing we see how jazz is how juan and all these guys play up over their expectation when it's a high expectation um and i think i just kind of fallen in that category of pushing myself and being around these guys and being able to find uh, part of parts of my game that uh make me better and at the end of the day it's just trying to you know necessarily not be the guy to screw it up so uh there's some incentive in that I talked to a lot of relievers over the year going back to the great Mariano Rivera, and there's always a camaraderie in the bullpen. How would you describe the chemistry and the camaraderie of the Yankee bullpen? Oh, it's a, it's a mess. It's a mess. Uh, you know, we individually go on to the mound, so then we're a part of the rest of the team, but when we're down there, it's just an absolute party. It's chaos. We're in our little box. You don't see what's going on down there, but we're having a great time. Uh, yeah, we keep it loose, we keep it light, we joke. Uh, Tommy has his fair share of moments, that's for sure. And uh, at the end of the day, when the call comes, uh, we got to perk up real quick. So uh, we're having a lot of great times down there. Um, it's definitely a different experience for me, and I've enjoyed it a lot. Fantastic, fantastic. Jose Trevino came into this year with more than four years of service time. 
We, we have to get to the news first because, Jose, we, we've missed seeing you on the field. You went on the IL mid-July with a quad injury. Could you please update us on how are you feeling and your status? Oh, uh, feeling good. We'll be back hopefully soon, so we'll see. <laughs> with something you might not know about yourself. Uh -oh. So there's an award in baseball called the Platinum Glove Award. Everybody's heard of the Gold Glove yeah. Award. Yeah. But then there are Platinum Glove winners. That means you were the best defensive player in the major leagues in that season. Did you know that you were one of only 15 players to ever win that award? I did not know that. That's good. Yeah. So the, the award has been given out since 2011. But guys like Arenado and Beltre and a couple other guys, they've won it every year. So it's eliminated the number of guys who have won it. When I hit you with that stat and you know how hard you work on your defense, how proud does that make you feel? Pretty proud. I think that's an accomplishment that goes a long ways. I mean, when I first started catching 2015, 16, um, I never thought I'd win a, a platinum glove. Um, just kind of all the hard work that kind of goes into it that people don't see. Uh, it just pays off and it's it's good to see, but I've always had people tell me like anybody can win it once. So we'll see what we got. You gotta come back and win it again. Yeah. Uh, pitch framing is something that you are so well known for. For anyone in the audience who doesn't know that, it's basically, he's stealing strikes. He's helping his team win by maybe guiding a pitch into the zone that wasn't a strike and getting an umpire call for a strike. How do you develop that skill? How do you find the ability to do that so subtly that an umpire gives you the strike? Um, I don't know. It's, I think it's an art that you just kind of develop. There's uh, certain coaches that help me along the way, uh, certain techniques that I've used from the past, from when I first started catching to even now. So I just continue to try to develop and keep getting you know, good calls for these guys because they like strikes. We look forward to seeing Jose back on a Yankee field soon. And guess what? The same can be said for the man to his left, Clark Schmidt. <laughs> He's fighting through a right lat injury, but he will actually face hitters tomorrow. So he's moving himself closer to being on the Yankee Stadium mound in the game again. Same question I asked Jose. Clark, can you give us an update on where you are physically? Um, yeah, I think it's uh, obviously very exciting facing hitters tomorrow. Um, we're, it's definitely a big step in the, the rehab process. I, I would say very soon. I think um, sooner than later. I don't want to put a time frame on it and then come back quicker but, or, or slower, but I think um, very soon, yeah. You said in an interview a couple of years ago that one of the things you like to do when you're about to face a lineup that day is visualize how you're going to pitch to each one of those batters. How does that visualization process help you once you actually get out there and have to do it? Yeah, I think um, the the biggest reason I probably do it is when you go when you bring yourself to an environment before you even got there, like mentally. Uh, it makes it a lot easier when you go through it uh, for the first time. Um, so for me, before I go out there, I, maybe the night before, a few nights before, if I know the lineup, I try to go through it and kind of what kind of sequences could we potentially be throwing to hitters and what does that environment feel like? What does, um, you know, if something goes not the way we expected, how do I respond to that? So I think just being able to, to bring yourself and feel the emotions as close as you possibly can before you go out there is, is a really big deal. And um, it definitely makes it to where when you're out there, it's, it's a, there's a comfortability when you're out there. It's like, oh, I've already been here before in my mind. I know, um, you know, if something goes wrong, inevitably that will happen in baseball. Um, you know, how can I respond to that? And, and the, the best way for me whenever I'm out there, especially in these big environments when we have you know, all these fans backing us up and, and, and screaming and um, even if you're on the road, if they're screaming at you, it's you, you have this sense of like peace when you're out there. It's just, you know, I've already done this before in my head and I know that, um, you know, I know what to expect. How much of an asset is it to have Garrett Cole as a teammate? Yeah. To bounce ideas off and to, and to give you some guidance? Yeah, I think um, it's, it's really hard not to get better on this team. Um, I think if you, 
you know, you, obviously we have the best hitters in the world with Soto and Judge, and um, we have the best pitchers in the world with Garrett and Clay in, in his respective position. And um, I think, you know, if you don't ask questions, if you don't watch the way they move, what, the way they prepare, uh, you're doing yourself a disservice. Um, I think, you know, the, the, the arc of a, a baseball player, there's a lot of ups and downs, and it's a, it's – you know, there's a lot of failure that goes with it, and you know you have to be able to learn from it. And I've seen, we've all seen, you know, Garrett and even the best players, you know, fail at the highest level. Um, and you know, you get to see how they respond to to those moments. So, it's it's really good to be able to just be on a team surrounded by so many great guys and and great players. Um, and it, it, like I said, it's very easy to get better on this team. Last but not least, Oswaldo Cabrera. <laughs> Oswaldo, you've played eight positions in Major League Baseball. Sorry. You've played eight different positions. And Travis Travi is teaching me to, to catch. He's teaching me. <laughs> so nine is coming soon, Yankee fans. You heard the great news here. That versatility is not something that every baseball player has. How do you find the comfort level no matter what position you play? I think my key... Obviously, mentally is something of oh, the most important in, in this game. And in my mind is the love that I have for the game and, and the love that I have for being the lineup is the, is the thing that got me working hard like every day, try to get better in each position. And use getting my mind that I have to be ready for the moment that they need me. Just do my best, try to do my best, and, and try to, to, to help the team win. His father was a professional volleyball player. I'm not sure how many people in the audience knew that. How did having a dad who succeeded at a high level in athletics guide you as you were coming up as an athlete yourself? Yeah, he's like the big mentor of my life. Uh, obviously, he knows how, as a professional sport athlete, uh, he knows a lot of things that, that probably that he, he teaches us when to me and my other two brothers tried to teach us when we was young. And having him in our life, obviously having my mom too, uh, that is part of, of, the, of that team, that teamwork. Uh, man, I can't describe all the great food that I have for him because all, all the things that he teach me, just not just to be a, a professional player, just to be a, a great man in the life is the, thing, is the biggest thing that I really appreciate for him. Terrific answer, and terrific answer from all five of them. As I mentioned earlier, that was batting practice. The real game starts now. So whoever wants to ask a question, we need you to raise your hand right now. And, oh, we got some. <laughs> Here's the only thing, guys. Are you guys twins? Yeah. So who's going first? The oldest guy or the youngest guy? <laughs> oldest is going first. So you just let us know who the question is for, okay? Alright. Check, check. <laughs> first, as Walker Bear, what's your warm up routine? Warm up routine. First, hear some salsa. That's 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 what I like to hear. <laughs> Put my headphones on and use her some salsa just to keep moving my body and just to warm up mentally. And then I got a lot of things. I think all, all the guys around here we got different things to do. But the biggest things that we try to do is is touch all the body, try to, to warm up all the part of the body, like try to, to get the most ready possible to any movement. That's 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 the biggest thing for I think for us. Why do you pick your number? And if you didn't, then I don't know. <laughs> Cabrera. So I didn't pick my number. When I get to the big leagues, I get the 95. And the first day that I get there, I see a couple of really good friends of mine wearing that jersey. Like they they customize the jersey. 
And I say, okay, this will be my number for life because I really <laughs> love it. And the people start to send me things about the, I don't know, say that in English, but I'm gonna try. The Rayo McQueen, the queen, the, the car, you know cars? Lightning McQueen, yeah. So I really, I really like the number and man, today's days is my favorite number. Good questions, guys, good questions. I think we got another young fan over here, seeing him up. My question's for Oswald Cabrera. Uh, what advice would you give your middle school self? Question, brother. What a question. So, I always say this, and, and for the young guys, never stop dream. It's my, it's my, it's my biggest thing because I think all, of, uh, all around here feels the same. Uh, I was a dreamer when I, when I was a kid, but at the same time, I had a dream and, and I go for it. I work for it, you know? So for that reason, everything that you want to do in your life, everything that, that you wish to do in your life, you go for it. That's the biggest thing that I can say for you. Great, great answer. We have twins, but only one wants to talk. <laughs> Tommy, who's your favorite teammate? Uh, I, I don't think I have a favorite, because I like all my teammates. But... <laughs> if I had to choose... Uh, man. I guess the guy two seats over to my left here. <laughs> uh, the big one, Trash Bros. You got a scoop there, young lady. Have you guys ever tried out for a baseball team but not make it as a kid? I will say, um, when I was younger, I wasn't like the best player on the team. You know, if I made the team, I wasn't like always, you know, starting or always playing. Um, I think everybody goes through stages where it's like you might feel like you're better or, or worse than others. But I think you have to, if, if you haven't made a team before, I think the key is just to continue to work and and I have failed before in my life, so I know what, it, what it's like to not achieve something that you wanted to do. Um, and I think the key is, is being able to learn from, you know, what, if you didn't make a team or if you didn't accomplish something that you didn't do, want to do, I think, you know, what can you do better? Like being a good, being able to assess yourself, like, you know, how can I get better? What are areas that I can, can, can come back and, and show these guys or show whoever I need to show that, you know, I deserve to be on this team. So if you haven't made a team, I would use that for motivation um, and, and know that all every single one of us up here, we've failed a lot of times in our lives. And I think a, the one of the main reasons, and a lot of these guys will probably agree that we're up here is because, you know, we didn't take that failure and we didn't give up. It wasn't like, oh, this is the end of the road for me. Maybe this isn't meant for me. Um, it was more so like, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show them, like, I, I'm going to come back better and, um, and just use it as motivation. Nice. Okay, so as a Yankee player, what does it feel like to play in the Subway Series? Who are you directing that to? Who do you want to answer? <laughs> I'll, I'll answer that. <laughs> uh, well, since it didn't go too well, uh, it, it wasn't as great as I thought it was going to be, but I, I would assume it's going to get better at some point. Um, I think as a guy who has had some rivalry like in his baseball career, like college, that type of stuff, um, that's what it feels like. It feels like a big... Uh, rivalry, something that um, there's a lot of anticipation for. Uh, there's a lot of extra media. There's a lot of more questions. There's a lot more spotlight uh, things. Well, here they are on the TV. Um, but at the end of the day, <laughs> yeah, whatever, guys. Um, 
But at the end of the day, you just you look at it like it's a normal baseball game, but you understand that there is a lot of uh, pride. There's a lot of there's two sides battling against it to try to get the W, and you know they prevail. But at the end of the season, we'll see what's up. Uh, you know, we'll leave it like that. We'll be all right. Yeah, cut that part. <laughs> My name is Peyton, and Trevino, if you weren't playing baseball, what would you be doing? What would you be doing? What would I be doing? What would I be doing if I wasn't playing baseball? Oh. Um, I'd, I'd probably be like a firefighter or like a cop or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I could see myself doing that. Maybe a coach. But I think like like firefighter or a cop or something, so I can take care of bad guys like Clark, you know, or rest of these guys. Luke, at this you score in a bullpen pitching well. But you came up as a starter. Next year do you see yourself starting or in the bullpen? <laughs> Since I'm already doing a bad job so far. Uh, <laughs> That's a good question. I think at the end of the day, we understand that that's not a decision that we make. Uh, it's a decision that um, is made by the people who you know, manage us and the front office. But at the end of the day, too, uh, just preparing as if, if that is a possibility, we go that route. But I think it's, it's something that's circulated. Even you know, with my wife, we talked randomly about it early in the season. But I just told her I was set on what I was doing right now. I was just set on being present where I'm at and just having fun, enjoying these guys down in the bullpen and just trying to be my best self and fit into a role that makes sense. Uh, something that's impactful for the team and uh, something that's consistent. And I think, um, you know, like anything, you can get your mind kind of swirling about all kinds of nonsense that don't necessarily matter in the moment. Uh, that'll be addressed down the road. But I think at the, at the moment, I'm, I'm happy where I'm at and I'm happy to be doing what I'm doing. Here we are. We're over on the other side, guys. My name is Henry in Oswaldo. Um, who's your favorite Yankee fan? <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate everybody that support me all the time, and, and I love all the Yankees, man, to be honest. So. so, Jose Trevino, who threw the hardest pitch to you? Yeah, ever. ever. Hardest pitch ever? Ever. Um, it sounded like that. Uh, I, Emmanuel Classe, 103, I think was the, was the pitch. It was a cutter, 103. No, it was in Texas, 2019. Yeah, he first came up throwing 103. Yeah, it wasn't wasn't too fun. Jeffrey, what is your three favorite rivalries in baseball? Ooh. Huh? It's a Twitter question right here. My three favorite. The Red Sox? Who else? The Mets? Yeah, the Astros. Yeah, it's a good, good one. Yeah. Um, I might look a little bit older, but trust, I'm 14. Uh, I'll ask this one to Clark, because he seems like the one who would please everybody in trades. Uh, because you can't, like, bet on baseball. As a team, do you partake in things like fantasy football and stuff? <laughs> I hope that's a good thing, the fleecing part. Um, uh, do I play fantasy? Yeah, we have a very big um, fantasy football team. Um, 
and it's the draft the fantasy football draft is like our one, probably our biggest event of the year involving our team so it's actually coming up within the month so we're we're all looking forward to it but yeah definitely i, I mean i'm a i'm a sports guy i love sports um unfortunately i'm a falcons fan so um but it, it's good like i like to because i'm a falcons fan i support uh uh fantasy football more than i support the falcons <laughs> All right, so I have a question. For he you likes guys. the oh, draft. Yeah. He likes the draft more than anything. Yeah. It's my guy. It's my guy. So I got a question for all five of you guys, and I, it's it's a very serious question. I hope you guys can answer it. If you forget the name, you can look right behind you. But what's got? What, you guys don't come to Jersey often. What's the best beer you've had in New Jersey? Where's it been? It's for all five of you, by the way. Uh, yeah, here Jeremy, the, be the, 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 be the beer, the beer that I just got served upstairs. Yeah. That was the best beer I've ever had. The Woodbridge Brewery. It was really good. This is the best, best place to have beer. Clark, what about you? How was your beer? Yeah, my ice cold. It was wonderful. The uh, best, right here. <laughs> Ozzy, you've been here twice, also. What's your favorite? What's your favorite beer? You had, did, you, did you like the beer here or no? I didn't. I, I don't drink, but I will say that one too. <laughs> Tommy, how about you? Without a doubt, Woodbridge Golden Ale. <laughs> Without a doubt. And Florida Boy, you're last. I saw y'all had some good spritzers, but <laughs> the beer was good. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Zane, and Trevino, if you switch positions, we'll be playing. No, 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 no. I'd, I'd probably be what I want to be or what I'd probably play. What I want to be. Oh, I want to be a shortstop. Yeah. That'd be fun. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Clark? That's not the question. I got. That's my question to you. Um, I would want to be a catcher. Of For real? Yeah. Oh, dude. <laughs> we. Second base. The most needed position on the field, obviously. <laughs> Whatever the team needs. Whatever the team needs. Because I'm not built like some of these guys. Pitch around and extraordinaire. We're all, we're all doing this? Right, right field, without a doubt. You got to let it eat. I want to throw people out at home. Nah, center, you got to cover way too much ground. Not me. You play them all. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Got a question for you. Thank you guys for coming out today. I appreciate it a lot. Now, I've had the pleasure of meeting three of you Trevi here, Cabrera, I got to interview here. Tommy, I met you at a bar in Tampa. <laughs> now, I'm going to need three of you to answer this question because it's all from a different perspective. To start, you guys have one of the best managers in baseball who will defend you at any given moment. Whether it's Boone trying to argue for the three pitchers here, whether he's whether an umpire is discrediting Trevi's framing, or if he's you know widening the zone for Cabrera. Now there's a lot of talk about automated strike zones, so I want you know one of the pitchers can answer or all three, Trevi and Cabrera to all kind of give you a perspective on how that will affect you and how it will affect the game of baseball. I played in AAA last year with the strike zone. For the hitters, it's funny. For the pitcher, it's not. So, but that will be different. Like, that will change the game. So, it's the human factor, you know. For for me, in my perspective, I prefer the umpire call the sounder because, you know, that's the, how the baseball is being all the life. So, for me, I don't, I don't want the strike zone. For you guys, <laughs> because we're gonna kill you guys. <laughs> um, yeah, I've had a, a chance to use the automated zone rehabbing, and uh, not a fan of it. <laughs> not a big fan of it. So, I mean, growing up all my life, we used umpires. I mean, baseball part of the game is the human error, so that's just my thoughts. I agree with Cabby, and you know, they're gonna do whatever they can do, but I know I'm a big fan of having umpires, so I don't know about everybody else. Uh, 
I don't like it. <laughs> but I don't like it because it's going to take the fun out of the catching position. We need to make catching fun again for kids. And right now, if they bring robot umps, it's, it's not going to be just going to be back there catching the ball. There's no really art to it uh, like there is now. But I think that the catch position will go away if they bring robo ups. And I think, uh, like they said, it's a part of the game. It's, it's been a part of the game. There's guys that have worked this hard to be at this level to show their skills off. Um, so I'm, I'm, I don't like it one bit. So, yeah, y'all can tell man for that. Hi. Anybody? Anybody? And then we have one still here. I got a question for all the guys up here. If you were one superhero, who would you be and why? <laughs> mm. um, well, my name's Clark, so Superman. Is that fair? <laughs> and I like, I mean, flying's cool. That seems cool to be able to fly anywhere. So I'm going to go with that. Is it true that you are getting your pilot license or you were working on it or something like that? No? Oh, okay. Are you going to answer the question? Dude, I'm the Hulk. <laughs> Sorry, I thought it was obvious. Um, <laughs> if, so there's a um, Jack Jack from The Incredibles. So uh, bear with me, he can do about everything. And he's still young, so there's a lot of life ahead of him. So we could start raw and kind of figure things out as we go. But basically, is a, a Swiss Army knife would take down all of you. <laughs> this one's pretty easy for me. My wallet tells a story. Uh, Deadpool, just because uh, he uh, obviously regeneration and can pretty much never die. <laughs> I will say Iron Man. That's my favorite superhero, so he's really funny too. And, and if I have Jack, to choose one, Jack, what about you? What about you? I did not expect this to be the one question I would have to answer today. I'd rather as answer the question from the kid who said, "Did you ever get cut from a baseball team?" The answer would be yes. I like to swim. I'll go with Aquaman. I mean, is he? That's all, that's all I got. We got someone over there. Practical joker within the group. Can you all seen that fun? Who do you think would be the biggest practical joker? And Robert's a joke. It's not me. It's not me. It's not me. But uh, ever since Gardy left, I'm trying to think here. Judgy is a big one, for sure. Sneaky. Very sneaky. Besides that, I, I don't know. You guys got anybody? <laughs> this guy right here is definitely one of them. <laughs> We're very serious about what we do. It's the freaking Yankees. I don't think anybody caught on to that one. I think this guy is, is up there. Um, it's like never intentional. It's always like supernatural and like accidental. So I don't know what you could take from that, but... He's just a natural specimen in that category, I guess. Anybody else? No? Tommy? Tommy's the answer. Tommy's our answer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is the end of the question and answer period. Let's give one more. <laughs> Thanks to everyone at Woodbridge Brewing Company for making this happen, and thanks to all five of these players for coming out on an off day. That was a rare in Major League Baseball, so the fact that they did this for you guys uh, says a lot about their character and how much they care about the fans.